With its specifically tuned copper base and maintenance-free plug-and-play operation, the EVGA 980Ti Hybrid offers ultra-fast gaming performance at the lowest temperatures possible. Click the link in the description for more details. Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and today we're gonna build a computer. We're gonna see how well a fully built AMD system would do uh, when it comes to a new game like Battlefront. Now for the CPU, we are using the AMD FX8370, which is basically a small revision to the very popular FX8350. It bumps up the base clock and the turbo clock a little bit, and it does give us four dual core modules in here for eight performance threads. Now I'm using some RAM here that I have used in several other systems and I'm just a huge fan of, and that is the ADATA XPG V2 RAM. This RAM is 1600 megahertz, it's two four gigabyte DIMMs for eight gigabytes total, which is more than enough for any modern modern gaming system. Now to keep the CPU cool, I'm using Cooler Master's new Gemini 2 S524 version two. Now this is a downdraft blower, which is gonna help keep the chipset on the AMD motherboard cool, uh, because we do know the Northbridge can get kind of hot. So we're gonna be looking forward to seeing how this thing does with its five copper heat pipes. Now the motherboard is a new MSI 990FXA gaming motherboard. Basically the chipset's nothing new, uh, but MSI has basically taken a lot of new features like the killer E2200 network card and USB 3.1 and rolled it into an older motherboard uh, architecture for the AMD. So you're getting an AMD chipset and an AMD CPU with some more modern technology built into it. Now for graphics cards, I am using the Radeon R9 380X uh, AMD graphics cards from XFX. This is their double dissipation cards, which are going to be factory overclocked. Uh, we got two of these guys here. We'll be testing out some crossfire performance in Battlefront and see how well it does. And we're going to probably overclock these just a little bit, maybe something around 1120 megahertz around there. Uh, but these things are, I chose these cards because they are very cool and very quiet. Now powering the system here is the Cooler Master V750. I chose this power supply because it is a gold rated power supply. It's got all black fully modular cables so that we don't, can take out the cables we don't need. It doesn't give us any of that ugly rainbow colors. Uh, and it is small and compact and very, very quiet. Not to mention it's gonna be more than enough power to power all of the parts in this system. And of course, we'll be shoving everything into Cooler Master's new Master Case 5, which I did a review of. Great case, great mid-tower case that can fit a lot of hardware. And then we're gonna be filling this thing out with as many of these silent uh, FP120, basically they're Cooler Master Silencio three pin fans, 1200 RPM, very, very quiet. So we wanna keep the system cool and quiet. So those are the parts, let's go ahead and do the build and then let's see how things actually perform.
obviously building the system was very, very simple. It was pretty much plug and play. AMD systems are some of the easiest that you can build, especially if you're a first time builder. Their CPUs are a lot more robust and easy to deal with than something like say an Intel chipset uh, an Intel, and an Intel motherboard. It can be a little bit scary with all those really delicate pins. But the build turned out really, really nice, especially with the inclusion of the NZXT Hue Plus, which I put in here, which is kind of neat because you can make the system any color that you want. Now, obviously the 8370 being an older architecture CPU, I was really curious to see how well things were going to perform. Now I did things basically on stock settings and then went into the MSI BIOS and then just did the OC Genie, uh, which really didn't do anything other than force the CPU to run at its turbo clock of 4.3 gigahertz at all times, and then bumped up the memory from 1333 to 1866. That's really all it did was it pretty much did like an XMP profile, uh, and then overclock the memory just a little bit to 1866 instead of 1600. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's really not much of an overclock at all. Really, it's just the turbo clock 24 seven. Now temperature stayed in check nicely with the Cooler Master Gemini 2. And the reason why I cho chose that cooler uh, is because of the fact that it is a downdraft. And AMD chipsets, especially the Northbridge, can get really hot, especially when you start to overclock them on 990FX chipsets. So I wanted that downdraft to give a little bit of active cooling as well to the motherboard and the RAM. So the big question on everyone's mind is how well did it perform? Well, it performed pretty damn good, especially considering we are on CPU architecture that is quite a few years old, but still very relevant today, especially with budget-minded builders. Now the 380X actually did a fantastic job at running this game by itself on Ultra, giving us about 70 FPS average. Like I said, at 1080p, Ultra with FreeSync on, uh, we were able to get about 70 FPS average. And the nice thing about the Nixius panel, which I'm using back here, is unlike some other FreeSync panels, is the 144 hertz panel that this is, is FreeSync up to 144 hertz, where some panels for FreeSync technology can limit around 75 FPS, and you don't get the full panel refresh technology uh, through FreeSync, which is really nice about this thing here. So we did have the nice even frame pacing as you would expect with FreeSync technology all the way up to the max 144 hertz. Now, considering when I turned on two 380Xs because I was like, well, we could do one 380X or we could just kind of go for broke, put in two and see what happens. Uh, we really didn't gain much. In fact, we sat around 81 FPS average uh, with two in Crossfire, but that's because the current Catalyst drivers right now are not uh, really optimized for Crossfire right now uh, with Battlefront. We're still awaiting official drivers from AMD. I am running the beta drivers right now, which were better than the official Crimson drivers that are out right now, uh, but we still saw some stuttering, and usually in the beginning of the game, it almost seemed to kind of smooth out as time went on, uh, but definitely not the performance I was hoping for with Crossfire, but that's okay. That is a driver and application problem with Battlefront, not really a hardware problem. So I would still right now tell you guys that I would recommend one powerful GPU like a 380X or uh, even a 390 or 390X over two lower end GPUs like 380Xs or 370Xs or 370s uh, if you guys were gonna be looking at doing possibly two cards instead of one. So when it comes to building for games, I still recommend one powerful GPU if you can swing it. Now temperatures on this system are kept super cool. In fact, I never saw the CPU go over 48 degrees Celsius with the side panel on while even overclocked to 1.45 volts on the V-Core, uh, which you know you guys can't compare that to Intel V-Core, uh, it's different for AMD, but 1.45 volts is no chump when it comes to voltage. And this Gemini kept things nice and cool, even with a room temperature of about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, guys, it's California. It's still pretty damn warm, even in the wintertime. Now, I think one thing that really made the gaming experience kind of nice here is the inclusion of this Nixius panel, uh, which I've had for a little bit here, and I finally got a chance to get my hands on. And I have to say, uh, this is the NXVUE24A. Now, it's a TN panel, but then again, at that super high refresh rate, uh, you, I don't know what, what other kind of panel you would have expected, but it's 144 hertz, 1080p, and lots and lots of settings in here where you can control the backlight. It's got its own built-in anti-blue filter so that you're not straining your eyes when you're 
uh, looking at documents or web pages and stuff. It takes out some of that blue, gets rid of some of your eye fatigue, but the refresh rate is absolutely fantastic. 144 hertz and it didn't skip a beat. And with the FreeSync technology built in, I have to say that gaming on it was absolutely butter smooth. And I've gamed on G-Sync systems. Obviously I have a G-Sync system and gaming on FreeSync. I have to say, pick your poison. They are both fantastic. But this Nixius panel uh, really surprised me. It's not very expensive. It's a 24 inch panel. Uh, but it gave you a super buttery smooth, fast response uh, gaming experience. I couldn't have asked for more. And the point here is that gaming on this thing for several hours now, I completely forgot I was on an AMD system. I wasn't sitting there thinking in the back of my mind like, oh man, this is not the latest and greatest of technology. It's not my big bad X99 skunk work system. No, I got into the games. I wasn't sitting here thinking about the stuttering and stuff. Well, until I had disabled Crossfire, because like I said, there is Crossfire bugs with current drivers and Crimson with Battlefront, but AMD says they're working on that. I know, graphics cards and driver issues, who'd have thought? But ultimately, gaming on it was perfectly smooth and fine. I had no problems whatsoever. In fact, I think the only thing I noticed uh, was going back to a hard drive based system rather than an SSD based system was probably the most noticeable. But even the WD Black in this is a very fast mechanical drive. You can hear the thing ticking away, but other than that, uh, load times are a little bit longer than an SSD, but once you're in the game, no noticeable issues whatsoever, whether it be AMD or Intel. It was, the point was I was gaming and I was having fun, and I just wanted to show you guys with a video like this that gaming on AMD is obviously still relevant. I'm asked all the time about AMD builds, so I said, let's build one and let's see how well it does. But anyway, I really don't have any need to keep this system because I have so many systems. In fact, as I've been showing you guys on Instagram and stuff, the Skunk Works build is moving along. And here is obviously the orange theme as it comes together with all of those chrome fittings and stuff. Looks fantastic. So obviously I don't need this thing. Now, not today, but very, very soon, I am gonna be giving away this monitor, that tower that you just saw get built and a brand new mechanical quick fire rapid eye keyboard and a brand new gaming mouse. So you guys don't ask me now how to enter because you can't enter yet. But trust me, somebody's gonna win this and somebody's gonna be enjoying some multi GPU amazingness and games and all that stuff, which is ultimately the point here. Enjoy some freaking games and stop worrying about what hardware you're using. All right guys, time to get out of here. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something. I always have fun doing these builds and I really couldn't do this without your guys' support. So as we get towards the end of the year, I just want to say thanks again, guys, for an amazing 2015. I'll try and do some sort of a rewind video for you. You guys have made this the best year of my life. That's why I want to give something back to you guys, and hopefully one of you will win and enjoy this system. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Follow on social media if you guys want to interact with me personally. Otherwise, I will just see you in the next video. Take care.